All right. Episode 161 of the 580 show. We got the OG boys, myself, Dante Frawley. What's up, boys? Been a while. Happening. I, know. I Been think a while. um I mean uh just started off by saying uh sign up for battle at the bridge three it's on iron podium right now we've got really really good participation in the men's classes already which is super awesome to see i don't know if you can pull that up dante i forget the exact numbers but i think super heavyweight and 231s already are they're 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 flying up we have one women's class with three or four people already open 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 is three middleweight is two for women yeah yeah and then what's the men's participation I'm looking right now. Like, I think the super heavyweights have a decent. We have, we have 157 spots open. Yeah, so 40, 43 spots taken already, which is really cool for six months out. Five one seventy yeah. fives. That's good. Seven two hundreds. That's good. That's good. Seven two thirty ones. That's good. Seven heavy super heavyweights. Wow, that's see that's that's pretty well balanced. Two two sixty fives. And we got a Masters yeah. 231, mass, two Masters Super Heavies. We got yeah. two Novice Men's 231. Yeah. Yeah. I'm mostly concerned. I mean, I want everyone to sign well, up. It's obviously for everyone, but I'm mostly concerned about, like, those Arnold classes. I think it would be so cool if you would have 12 plus. I know it's a pipe dream, but 12 plus in all the men's open classes because then you have the four Nationals bids with the Arnold bid, too. Five. Wait. Five, yeah, five. Sorry, five. good, good catch. Yeah, you have, yeah. If you have nine, you have four. If you have five, if you have twelve, so you would, I mean, you would have twenty five nationals bids in one show just for that's men. A lot, yeah. That would be and really the really first cool. year we did it. We the first year that we did it, the super heavyweights did have five. We had five bids. It yeah. was awesome. Same with the two thirty. Same with the two thirty one. Did you guys have? Did you too? I, I didn't remember. Yeah, but, we had like yeah, we had yeah, like I mean, fourteen people get, in the class. And now that has to be people that ready. show up. They got to sh- actually show yes, up, you know, right. like, so that's the other tricky part. So, yeah, let's try to pump those numbers up. I think we have a ton of cool stuff. I actually just got some product from a sponsor right at my door, literally right before here. So shout out to Dude Wipes. Dude Wipes sent, oh, that's cool. Dude Wipes sent over 300 products for us to give out to all the competitors and volunteers and everything like that and have some extra for spectators at the show. So, Dude, huge shout out to Dude Wipes for like a company that just that's awesome. Um, helping out. Yeah. So we're we're going we're, nuts for sponsors this year. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have a lot this year, uh, and hopefully, you know, quantity over or quality over quantity. A lot of quantity, but hopefully, all quality sponsors. Which is just appreciate everyone that helps us out with that. So if you're a female open, men open, a- anyone. I mean, all classes are available, but I would love to pump those nationals bids up specifically, but. Definitely pumped to have novices, masters, teens, stuff too. So, yeah, and we'll we'll have updates with that. But, but um, but yeah, I'm really excited for Bridge this year. Um, I guess anything else going on in Strongman? We were talking about a couple of topics I want to talk about today. Yeah, but anything else really um going on right now? I mean, a lot of people are getting prepped for the Arnold. Yeah. Johnson, mm-hmm. getting prepped um, for that. Next weekend is the Bricktown Showdown, which I've talked about that on mm-hmm. here before. Um, I think it's the third one now, and I remember watching it last year, and it was a really awesome show. Um, yeah. If I remember right, it's a USS Pro Show or Pro Am show. Yeah, it's a Pro. Like it's a USS Pro Am. Yeah, and they did an awesome job last year, so I definitely want to get want to check that out next weekend. Yeah. Um, it's on the twentieth, so it's it'll be the Saturday. Um, that's the biggest one that I can think of. Other ESL. than ESL. Like, PSL, 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 January twentieth. That's next yeah. week in Baltimore. I really wish I could have competed, but being that close to Ali being pregnant, yeah, just not not worth it. I don't really Dante want to stream right? right? Yeah, Dante yep. is doing the stream for it. Yep. So yeah, that's huge. What's that's your awesome. Dante? You, I mean, I obviously follow you, but what's the you put a you started a live stream, like uh, well, it's just like week. yeah, on Instagram. It's just kind of like just for my production stuff. Just keep it organized, and if people want to actually reach out for yeah, what stuff, is you it? know it's uh, Dante it. Petrella Productions. Cool. Yeah, it's you got DPP do... underscore production on Instagram. I had to do DPP because DP wasn't allowed. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, and it's also like it's crazy. PSL, so they have like 50 people competing um in Baltimore, and that's without super heavyweights. Because remember, they're yeah. weight class. 
Yep. Dude, they have without just counting, they have at least twenty one oh five signed up. Yeah, they have a lot. Oh, wow. They have two, four, six, eight, ten. They have fifteen nineties. They only have they have six eighties. They got four eighty twos. But like the one oh fives are insane. They have to have twenty five one oh fives. What's the lady participation? Is Luke like? it's horrible. Is is Not Luke good. Davis actually coming over for that? I don't know. Is he on the competitor list? Yeah, 105s. Is Rihanna doing, doing it? No, she's not on the list. A lot of familiar face on there. Uh, Jimmy Harris, who's really good. Okay. One. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people. We know a lot of people on this 105 list. Adam Knotts, I've known through doing shows in West Virginia. I don't know if you guys know him. Yeah. Luke, um, Mark Magestro. He's on who? our shows. Um, Daryl Aldridge, who's a Strongman Court State Chair. Eric Olmstead, obviously we know. Mm-hmm. Um, Jake Arthur, we know. Jimmy Harris, I already mentioned. One hundred fives, nineties. I don't really know any nineties. Charlie D- Doher or Doug Her, mm-hmm. he's one of Nick Hines' guys. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't really know any other nineties, to be honest. Eighties, um, I I know some of them, and, but there's only five total women. That's, that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, there's only one sixty four. Woman, I should have Dude. Allie go. I should have Allie go compete pregnant and just qualify as a sixty-four. I'll give her something to do when she gets okay. back. Yeah. Do you think that's because of the? I mean, obviously, this is speculation on our part, but like, do you think that's because of not having the centralized qualifier, or like, Maybe. didn't they have? Didn't the didn't not? Um, this isn't even just specific to the women. Um, like the class year, the eighties was at Denver last year, right? Um. Yeah. Like they channeled no, that's everybody two, two to years one ago. Lo- two years ago, okay. So they channeled everybody to one location, and I'm wondering if that might be why yeah. the participate. Well, it's also right after the holidays. Makes it right tough. after the holidays, a yeah. lot of people are prepping for the Arnold. That's that's yeah. a tight turnaround yeah. for the Arnold because we're what six weeks six, at that six point. weeks out from the Arnold. Oh dear God! Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> um, Doesn't even feel you know, like it. I don't think Baltimore is a bad location. I know that's <laughs> low, I, but um. Yeah, it, it's hard. I think they had another qualifier in Huntington Beach. So the okay. two qualifiers, they had a, one of the qualifiers was Huntington Beach in California, and then this one's Baltimore. So um, definitely sucks if you're a Midwester. But, yeah. Uh, but, no, I mean, it's cool. You can only have so many opportunities for it. I get yep. it. It's still we'll growing. I I really hope Tyler um, Purdue keeps a way to keep this going. And um, they obviously had all the stuff with Clash that's kind of been uh, – you know, a shadow over their head. So right. definitely cool. The events, axle clean and press ladder, a basket deadlift, a yoke carry into sandbag load, a frame carry that's 70 feet, and then a stone over bar. I think all clash PSL shows end with the, the stone over bar, that last yeah. man, which I love. Yeah, it's um, an awesome event. If you, I don't know if you guys saw, but I encourage anyone listening, go check out the frame that PSL had made on Instagram. Okay. Um, Big shout. I want to get the I, I just want to take a second to look at it because I want to give the guy who made it props. It's a strong man company. It's like the pig iron works or whatever that guy's name mm-hmm. is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metal, okay. pig iron metal or whatever. I think yeah. it was just on a story. But you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Pig, Dante, pig iron metal works. You think you could you think you could plug in a picture of it? Yeah, probably. Uh, producer. Sure. Well, the so the Instagram is pig underscore iron underscore metalworks, mm-hmm. and he made a frame for PSL that is sick, and uh, it's uh, it's it's on his story right now. But it's a it's, it's one of the cooler frames I've ever seen. So definitely check that out. It's it's always cool to see like innovative strongman stuff, and he does like crazy paint jobs on strongman equipment too. If you ever want to see it, he has a ton of posts. That's it's cool. really unique. So, but yeah, that shows that shows probably one of the biggest things happening around here. For sure. In the next uh next couple of weeks. America's strongest state. Uh yeah. the, the finals mm-hmm. that they're calling it. Where is that? Jacksonville. Or, okay, that's cool. February is it Jacksonville? Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Okay. February seventeenth. Okay, so that's about a month out. It's such a cool idea. Obviously, we talked about it on the pod, like when we had that idea, and we've I've talked to Brandon who runs it, but it just needs to find a way to make it. I think the timing was really bad. Like yeah. I know for us to go all the way up to Massachusetts for team PA. Yeah. Which is a 10, 11 hour drive, 12 hour drive the week after Christmas was tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I think cool idea. 
the idea in motion is good though right definitely it definitely it's, it's, it's like can, anything it's easy to be exactly. critical of it and they're, they're just working out the right you know like how uh, do we make it better honestly if it was me i would do like how i would do the regionals or whatever as a is that what this last weekend was yeah the last week was okay. like you know northeast i would do it like static monsters you have okay. to you, you you have to go to a gym in your state as a gym. If multiple states want to meet up, like, that are close, like Rhode Island and, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. they can go do that. But, like, do the regionals all just, like, online. Submit it and then have the America's Strongest State where you actually go. Because, I, just, I mean, I think about for myself, you know, January 6th, you travel decently far, depending on what your state is, to go there. And then, like, five short weeks later – you have to go to Tallahassee, Florida. You know what I mean? It's it's just sure. a lot. Of, it's a lot of travel, but I sure. love the idea. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd be curious what people thought about that. I'm too. sure it's going to evolve into something pretty cool. Sure, and it already yeah. is. It started off cool, so it's gonna it's gonna keep going. I like it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, it was just I was scanning Iron Podium to see if there's anything else super crazy, but I don't think. I mean, ton of shows coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, for sure. Yeah, I'll be. I I want to watch that Bricktown too because I'll be I'll be in Dante's chat on the PSL qualifier because I'll For be sure. excited to watch that. Yeah. So yeah. definitely, definitely follow Dante's account because he's been trying to stream more and more, and he's been doing a really good job with it. So, um, but yeah, what else? What else were we talking about? We we're talking about some topics in Strongman. Which what do you guys want to start with? I was um, uh, go ahead. Um. Well, I we were talking about two topics. I, I I want as much feedback as possible on it this week. I'd be curious yeah. what people think. I think they're two really good topics. Uh -huh. the, you know, the first one is like all these crazy obscure events in Strongman versus like more blue blood events. Right. And like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, we've done creative ish sure. events at shows. I'm a huge fan of like shows like the Arnold, and I'm not taking a dig at anyone. I'm really not. Um, yeah. But like big shows like the Arnold, Nationals, mm -hmm. whether it's Strongman Corp, USS, OSG, having mm -hmm. more what we would say like blue blood events. Right. Right. I'm I'd be curious what people think of that. I always like innovation. I think I think it's good. I think, but I think sometimes people try to get a little too cute. Yeah. And I, I do think it's relevant. I mean, OSG's press ladder in the Ruck Medley, Ruck Survival Challenge. It was different. I mean, most like we haven't really seen that before. The Arnold yeah. has the press medley. Um, the squat's a little bit different. Um, wasn't there another one? Oh, the sandbag Disney. toss is weird. Yeah, the sandbag toss is a little bit different than what we're used to. And it's pressing like, with chains. Yeah. So See, like I don't like I like Lynn doing it because Lynn has the means to do it. Mm -hmm. sure. like like uh, it's hard for me to be critical of lynn because his volunteer team is so awesome yeah and like i thought it was i think it's cool when lynn innovates because he obviously puts thought into it yes like That's the true. go it's ruck challenge it, it's, it wasn't just throwing shit at a wall and hoping it nope. sticks nope definitely he's not. gonna run it awesome no matter what mm -hmm. so like it's really hard for me to be critical because he's bringing so much attention to the sport and like offering such a large platform but it's like events like and like again, I'm not putting a dig at anyone, but like I think back to like USS Nationals this year, like that, mm -hmm. like that dead that lever deadlift ladder where you had to like hook and unhook. Yeah, like it's like I, I don't like that, okay. <laughs> but like I, I I like innovation. That's just me personally, you know. Yeah. If you and have I the think... means to do it, that's great. Yeah. But I think you okay. A couple things. I always think about the volunteers. Like, how yeah. hard am I making the volunteers' life? It already sucks for the weekend. They're giving up all their time, effort, all this stuff just to help us run a comp, right? We yeah. see it at 580 our shows. So can I pick events that are cool and fun for the competitors, but also the volunteers are good? But then on the other hand, can the – keep the athletes – Your let me say this. Try, let me try to say this as clearly as possible. The level we're at in Strongman, no matter what level, if you're a novice or if you're at OSG, you are the funding of the sport right now and the yep. model in America. That is how Strongman pays out their athletes. That's how they afford equipment. That's how you afford everything. 
is entry fees. So keep the athletes in mind. That's why I don't love really cute events. Like where I see Dante having to do like a six of event, six. Event six, press medley. Six yeah. implement. Implement. Six implement. Sorry. I just like blacked out. Yeah. Six implement press medley with like obscure stuff. It's like, that sucks. It what sucks is it for the loading. It sucked for the loading last year. And it was kind yeah. of a shit show at the Arnold. And it's like, what do I do now? Like, like what is like and Dante spoiled. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but yeah, like we have there's stuff. not a lot of places where you can go and have like we can now do like we're adding another lane by our turf to do carries. Like where can like, you realistically do three 80 foot carries at one time and also in the back do six event press medley. six Im- implement press medley and have two plat like not a lot of people. You we are the exception, not the rule. You know, strongman is predominantly yeah. trained out of garages, mm-hmm. out of commercial gyms like I like keeping the athletes in mind too. It's like a deadlift the other for reps thing is like, wouldn't hurt. The other thing is too is like I'd be curious. Obviously, I'm not doing the Arnold. I didn't qualify, but like yeah. the the thing is that like how do you approach that from a competitor standpoint? Do you set up six implements every time you do this press medley, or is it like okay, I'm not so good at, and I think most people wouldn't be good at pressing a sandbag because not very many people do that. Um, a keg, a dumbbell, or like. Do you spend more time in the, on the individual implements that you need to be more familiar with? Do you yeah. train the pre, the the six implements all at the same time? Um, you know, it's a little bit different, and yeah. I'm just I'm kind of curious on that too. You know, the way I approach it as a coach is like I'll have them. It, it re, actually I, I won't even say that because it so, depends so much on the person. Yes, I agree. Like if agree. you're you know like you have to be honest with yourself. I think as a competitor, where it's like okay. Are you just trying to get the first implement? Yeah. yeah. You know, like then work on that first implement. Like if you're gonna be happy just getting through that first one, work on that. If you're like an exceptional athlete that you know you're gonna finish the press medley, you're gonna have to practice a press medley, probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're you're expecting to get through six. It sure it's really, really hard. It's yeah. And the, the other thing that I like about like the result, the result of an event like that, right? You go through, everybody does the same event. And whoever comes out on tops probably truly is the best presser, right? Like, yeah. I think that's that's a cool distinction that yeah. you don't really – you don't necessarily get to see when you're just doing, I don't know, a max log, right? Like, yeah. you might be really good at log, <sighs> getting a good uh, max rep, but, like, if some if you're doing an 80% of your max rep going for reps, and, like, somebody else might be a lot better at that, you know? And some of that sure. parity is, like, what what makes it so much, somewhat interesting – but I will say that part. I do like that. Like, if you can get through this thing pretty quick, you're probably the best one here, without a doubt. Yeah. Right? yeah, for sure. So I think, yeah. And I also do think like obscure events, not even obscure, like maybe like events that um aren't as aren't as prevalent <clears throat> in shows, like maybe like a Fingle Fingers. Yeah. Or even just doing your first. I think it's cool to train events that you've never got to train before. Sure. Like, yeah, we all train, have trained yoke. We've all trained log. We've all trained farmers. That's awesome. And like, that is what you probably should spend the most of your time in event wise. Cause that's going to be the most, you're going to see it the most. Yeah. You're going to see it the most a hundred percent, but like, it is fun to get and to train something new. Like I had a, I'm not yes. going to lie. I had a blast training the go ruck medley for OSG. Yeah. Like yeah. it was new. It was fun. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like an event that was maybe funner for like a more a, a smaller weight class athlete like yeah, 80 like, or 90 big boys gonna be up big boys up. didn't like it they complained yeah. and called it crossfit but whatever but <laughs> but no like i i think there is the flip side where it's like it's cool yeah. the strong man at its core is unfamiliar odd objects right yeah so yeah. so the, the other thing too is like and this is kind of more for us like us three i'd be curious what other people think too but like if you see a show that has an obscure event. We'll call, we're calling it obscure just for the general uh, yeah. description, right? And then a list of maybe two of the five events are obscure versus a show that is five blue blood. This is yeah. what strongman is. Does that change how you look at the show? I'd be curious what people think about that. Like, like you go, oh, like that event's weird. I don't really like that. Would you rather do this show because it's five true blue blood events? You know what I mean? Like, what do you guys think about that? I'm just curious. See, I like, I like blue blood events. I like events that are going to get me stronger. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's just me. Like, 
and like I said, like I really like, so I'll use an example. I'm doing a show like kind of as like a tune up fun, whatever sure. you want to call it show. Just as a 200, not cutting this spring. And I picked a show that's not far from home, but I love the events. I thought they were cool, true blue blood events with something that is new to me. I've mm -hmm. never really got to train for a truck pool. So there's okay. a truck bowl in this show. So that's kind of like, I like a good balance. I like maybe like four. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, a truck bowl is a blue blood strongman event, but it's not that prominent because right. it's so hard to run. Yep. So like this show has stones, log. Okay. A deadlift. Yep. And farmers. Farmers and a yoke. Oh. Farmers yoke medley. So yeah. literally like four of the most true and then a truck pool. You can even say five because you yeah. have five of them. That's right. right. Like, so, so I guess that answers my question. I would rather ones that are going to be easier for me to train. I'm probably going to benefit from it a lot more because they're going to, it's going to have more carry over to future shows. Sure. Um, that's just me. What do you, you think? Know? Dante? I'm just curious. Yeah. Like, um, like if you, if you see it, like you, does it push you away? Does it go, Ooh, that event's kind of interesting. Is, you know what I mean? What do you think? It, Honestly, it almost pushed me away signing up for the Arnold because I really didn't want to deal with that six up from medley. And is it more same... because of the setup for training? Uh, see, that doesn't bother me that much because I live okay. so close to the gym. But if I live further away from the gym, it might have impacted me a little bit because yeah. I'm already there too much half the time, anyways. <laughs> but um, it's also too like keep hold that thought. But like, I'll never be critical of someone if they if they can run and promote the show effectively. Like sure. if they're if they're if they have the most obscure events, but you're like, that dude's going to do it. And he does it well every time. Like what I said about Lynn, but right. like Dante said, and I'm not being critical. I mean, I guess I am being critical, but like, I'm not, I'm not being a dick, but it's like last year we had a six implement loading medley mm -hmm. and it really struggled. Yeah. Yeah. They, the cha they changed some friend. stuff and it took way too long than I thought it would, but yeah. So it's like, I don't know, that, that's, that's the thing too. It's like Arnold's a big show and that's really why I want to do it. Just because you're gonna get better from doing these big shows, but at the same time, it's just like I just hope it gets better because like if we just keep doing stuff like that and it just never gets better, it's gonna be like really just yeah. pushing me away further and further. Like, yeah. like why would I want to do the Arnold if I know it's gonna be like horribly ran? I'm not saying it's gonna be horribly ran, but like, what if it was? Yeah, I... Like, and then I could be doing like an Olympic, the Olympic City Pro Am with Frawley instead, like around the same right. time, another big show. And that's kind of what. That's kind of what made me think of it, right? Is like I'm prepping for the Olympic City Pro Am, Don, which is uh, right a log ladder, a heavy yoke, heavy stones, heavy farmers, and an axle deadlift from the floor. Well, a nine that's inch cool. axle deadlift, yeah, but that's cool. like those are blue blood events. And like I'm not saying like obviously I if I qualified for the Arnold, I'd more than likely be competing at the Arnold. But like right. it's a kind of a contrast there to see like okay, you know. No, that's not to say some of the events that you're doing and setting up for are not blue blood, right? Mm -hmm. Like a squat's it's... pretty common, might be a little bit different. Yeah, uh, but a squat's little... common, but like when you don't even know how it's going to be set up. Exactly. So that, up, that's yeah. a little different. I mean, I do understand like if you if you just get better at squatting, it's going to help a lot. Yeah, but absolutely. There is – it's something I have learned a lot in the last like five years in Strongman that I was very naive to when I started is – specificity leading into an event does help significantly like oh yeah like sure. using a cerberus sandbag like how it's going to be at the show is it helps yep for sure like ver like having access to equipment helps i don't care what anyone says i mean yeah. obviously being it's strong is the number one but but having access to equipment it does really help so that's why i like picking events that like i mean look at bridge for example like it's a frame carry and a yoke mm -hmm. it's a deadlift it's a log and an axle. It oh. is um, a sandbag. Sandbag, and sandbag and shoulder. Yeah, and it's like it's like stuff like if you are involved in strongman, you're probably gonna have access to that equipment. Sure. At, at least once a week, like you're gonna sure. have, you know what I mean. So that's how yeah. I try. I mean, I uh, props to the people. Like I always reference this, but like USS Nationals, that's a big show. Yeah. And like they just, in my opinion, just crushed it with events. This year coming up. So, yes. Yes. Yeah, this like, year. 2024. 2023 exactly. was horrible. Yeah. It was horrible. Like, uh, 2021, 2024, Circus Dumbbell, yep. yo Yoke Walk, Deadlift, Sandbag to Shoulder and Carry, and Stone Over Bar. Stop. It's like. Uh, and I think 
I think those, I think people see those events and they go, yes, like that's what I want to see. You know what I mean? It I, is insane how many people but I also for USS Nationals. There's a lot of people signed up. Is that what you said? Dude, there are already 355 competitors wow. signed up and it's not wow. till June. Yeah. There's going to be cool. more too. Oh, the, it's capped at 500. There's only 140 yeah. spots left. 145 yeah. spots. That's crazy. Yeah. See, That's I, cool. I like that though, like you were saying. There's, there's going to be so many people, but the events are much more simple. So, I mean, dude, in, if I, in theory, if it's going to go quicker. Yeah. If I ever had the opportunity to run a nationals or a huge, like, bridge is big. Big is big. Bridge. Jeez, I can't big. speak that. It's big <laughs> for, <laughs> for a local regional whatever yeah. but yeah. it's not the level like it's very hard to be critical of someone who runs us as nationals with 500 people like that is mm -hmm. a task but in my opinion i would be like man i am making these as simple as possible because we're gonna have 500 people yeah like i would pick a yoke a deadlift for reps a log press or an axle press for reps like i would just do it as just pretty much what they've done and like, and like, yeah. And, yeah you can make them fun too without being too too creative 100 percent. like yeah. that's what i'm saying like you can make events fun. I, I think I would have more fun going to an event and it being ran well than like an event looking fun on paper. Does that make sense? Sure. Like, oh, we're going to do this crazy event that no one's ever done, but it runs like crap. Yeah. Like that's cool that you had the idea, but you're so far from executing. I would have rather just done a yoke run. And been yeah. done with the show in five or six hours. And that's one thing. For... That's truly one thing that I would say. And again, Lynn does a great job. I'm not taking a dig at him. But when I watched the uh, frame to Denny Stone, Nickel Stone, whatever they're referring to it as, I would honestly have rather have seen somebody do a frame down and back. Because yeah. Yeah. the end of that race when people are neck and neck is ex is insanely exciting. Not to say that no one was ever exciting, but like, the, the races that, that that were there were exciting, but the nickel stones aren't exactly the most, what do I want to say, a, a exciting event because you're waddling like a duck or a mm -hmm. penguin. You know what I mean? Like, like it's hard to move with good speed. And obviously the people that did move with good speed did well in the event. I get all that. Yeah. But like seeing the guys run down and run back with a frame and they're finishing and crossing the line at the same time, like, I think I'd rather seen that than the Denny Stone walk. Truthfully, that's just my opinion. Uh, I so badly wish that the Denny Stone yeah. would have gotten left and, in twenty twenty three. It's at the Arnold again. I just yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's not even the Arnold. It's like everywhere. We've yeah. talked about on this pod for like the three years we've done it, but like there's always that event that randomly catches fire for the entire yeah. year, yeah. and it's Denny Stones this year. Yep. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, it just won't go away. I, I would rather the I'd rather rather the 13 inch axle come back. I'm sorry, yeah. I think I think Denny Stones is such a horrible event. <laughs> I think it is one of the worst events I've ever seen in Strongman. That's yeah. my opinion. I I don't really. That's people probably love it, but I hate sure. it. I think it's we'll stupid. It. I think and, I think and that's and the best I think part of having walking with Denny Stones is even dumber. Just <laughs> all, I'm I'm being honest. I think Denny Stones sucks. <laughs> Listen, that's saying? why that's why everyone's allowed to have an opinion. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But so, yeah, man, yeah. I don't know. I'd be curious what other people have to say. So if you have any thoughts, please share. Definitely, you know? man. Yeah, do you guys I'm like curious. do you guys like the events that like Denny Stones? Like do you like obscure events or do you like blue blood traditional strong man events? I'm curious. Like, I, I like watching obscure events like in World's Strongest Man. Like that kind of level. Like yes. I don't know. It's but like, they execute it so well. It's because there's it's like, like twenty people. They yeah. can just take their time. I'm they on do a, like they do like two events every like one day a week, like you know. Yeah, and I'm it on a huge. I'm on a huge kick of rewatching all the world's strongest man. Some guy uploads them on YouTube, so if you yeah, want to watch there's them, a channel. Yeah, they, it is so it's incredible. Like the production, like we do chirp world's strongest man sometimes because it's not live and we're salty, but <laughs> like it is truly insane. Like the level of production and thought they put into the implements, like it is truly unmatched. Yeah. Like what that team yeah. does, like, and when you say we chirp them, it's literally just because we can't watch it live. Yeah, it's and just it's just out of bitterness, and I do understand. Like, like, if someone was like, it, you know, if someone was like, you can't announce, you can't release the winners of Bridge for three months, and I'm going to give you twenty thousand dollars, I'd be like, yes, sir. Like, <laughs> right. I and people can tell you what happened, but grand. I'm not going to tell you, and we're not going to promote what happens, and we're just going to act like it happened now 
Yeah, remember, three months. Do you remember when they were trying to watch it live and they found that like that boardwalk cam? Oh can, like, yeah, Beach. <laughs> that's what that I'm imagining fun. people do at Bridge. Like they'll like try to find like a, like, a traffic say, cam for the outside. I will say, I wish. I don't know. I don't know why, but watching all the old World Strongest Man, like I'm back in like I'm in like 2009, I think right now, and like I wish they'd go back to all these obscure countries. Uh, yeah, it was so. It was like kind of like. It, it's cool to see like what what country were they in that it was like but they used to go to literally like almost like basically third world countries mm, yeah and do them mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's a major reason for like coming to the United States it may yeah. it seemed like the turnout was amazing this year so props yeah. to them like I'm sure it's working out but it was like cool to see like a country that doesn't really understand strongman and like the whole like town or village or whatever would come out and they'd be mm -hmm. so you watch these people's reactions and they were so amazed. Yeah. Like they'd never seen a human as big as Brian Shaw or Thor. <laughs> yeah, they're not very many. Yeah, right. So it was just there's not very many of them. It was just so. something it was like a different feel about it. Like For it was, sure. I don't know. But I, I also do like that it's in America. And Giants Live, the World Deadlift Championships Vegas. in Vegas this year. Yep. That's probably cool. not probably won't break eleven oh five again. No, probably not. But it's it is so crazy. Like that's cool lift, that it's coming back to the states. That's for awesome. Sure. But that lift, I I think Thor's lift, Thor and Eddie's deadlifts. I know it's like yeah. a highly debated, but I do truthfully think they're the two greatest lifts in strongman history. Because what what no matter what side of the fence you're on, like. Dude, they offered Thor an insane amount of money to do it at his gym, yeah. and it was in an unprecedented time where we we were in the state of a pandemic in the world, so you couldn't go out. There were no sports on really besides like the NBA bubble, and it gave everyone something to watch. Yeah, he yeah. did his home gym, but that eleven oh five deadlift, the five oh whatever. Yeah, dude, how long it's been? It's been people have trying to break it every year since, and really yeah. haven't come close to be honest. Yeah. yeah. The what's his name? The um Tardiv Markov. What's that? Whatever that Mark guy's Rob. name is. Mark he Rob. was he, he was, was the close. He was the closest. He got it to his knee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but do you, like do you think that's because people just try it too often and too much and they don't have time to like actually build up and train for that? Well, I think they only try it the once a year at the Deadlift Championship. I I, like, I know what you're saying though, Dante. Like I think less is more. Like maybe contest it every three years. Oh, okay, okay. You know what I mean? Versus mm -hmm. like having the Giants Live Deadlift Championship every year. Because like year. peaking for a deadlift like that, like try and do that. Well, you're you're you're, you're you out of, you're out of commission for like three months. From, like well, deadlifting you, literally, the... you literally can't do anything else. Yeah. Like, if you're trying to break a number that's that insane, I mean, you're talking about a 505 kilo deadlift. Did they? Did Thor and Eddie both not do that? Like, did they not only do that? I mean, they I focused. Like, their training the was highly dedicated to doing that. No, they both definitely just dedicated just to that. That's what I'm saying. Like, it, yeah. so like it, expecting someone to do it just through a normal prep when people yeah, are highly dedicating that. themselves, it's not you know. I the just, level. so I think it just speaks to how insane that record is because it stood. It's been tried. It's been contested so many times, yeah. and it's just not even coming close right now. To be honest, yeah. I mean, so we're talking the difference between Eddie and Thor two pounds. So like, yeah, right. You, I mean, pick whichever one you like better. Okay. If it's eleven oh two or eleven oh four, whichever the difference is, then either way, no one's coming close to either of those numbers. <laughs> right. If, if we're just being completely honest. Yeah, but, it's crazy. Like if you watch, I was watching like the twenty eighteen Arnold. I think yeah. the world record deadlift in strongman that year was like ten twenty six. Really? Like how oh. far or like ten thirty? You know, it was like it wasn't even at ten fifty yet. Was the that when Jerry Pritchett? Record, was that when Jerry Pritchett got the American one? Yeah, they. They broke, I believe they broke Jerry Pritchett's record at the 2018 Arnold. And okay. now, and then, you know, for Eddie and Thor to take it over 1100 yeah, is, it's crazy. Well, I think Eddie made it a personal mission to be like, I want to deadlift 500 kilos. Like, he wasn't like, I want to set the deadlift record. Obviously, he did feel that way. But I think he, he also said, I want to deadlift 500 kilos. It wasn't yeah. like, I'm just going to break the record, you know. So, I think sure. like I think Eddie almost like did it right, man. Like he went, he won his world strongest man, and then he focused on like getting healthier again. And like obviously, like he's doing all these shticks now, like boxing and yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. But I mean, you can't really fault a person for making money 
Honestly, man, like if someone tells me I can box Dante for five hundred thousand dollars, dude, we're gonna box. Like gonna I'm box. sure Dante's gonna box too. Like I mean, we're yeah. gonna box. Yeah. I mean, if you guys want to see that, pay us up. We'll, we'll be glad. We'll Eddie, glad they do it. Eddie and Thor box for literally life changing money. Like people yeah. don't realize that. Yeah, like, I mean, they're gonna, anyone would. Anyone. Right. Would. <laughs> I do think it's hilarious that like Brian Shaw retired from strongman because he's old, and then he signs up for MMA. It's like so you're you're picking the the only other sport that can literally beat you up probably worse. Dude, they're probably but just bored. Again, money. Money, yeah. boredom. And also you gotta remember, people like that are wired so much differently. Like Brian Shaw is one of the do. Brian Shaw is one of the greatest strength athletes of all time. Literally one of the greatest of all time in strength discipline. That guy is wired different. You don't get that way being a normal human being. Yeah. So then- you know he comes down from winning four world strongest men and he's realized he probably isn't going to win another one he needs something to do so dante's 100 percent right like you need something you don't just compete your whole life and then and like, just you play college out. basketball and then and just, just like i'm help. just gonna go hang out with my Water, wife for you know? 20 hours a day. Yeah. Yeah. he's gonna pick I, up gardening or something in colorado yeah, yeah exactly yeah you need exactly. something i mean look at marius pujanowski he went to mma like right. actually he had like a long yeah. career he's looking good I heard, He's wasn't it him good. or Mitchell Hooper and Brian Shaw supposed to have like some four way fight or something? I, wasn't I wasn't that like a thing? Stuff. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll see when it actually arises. But no, it's that sparked a great conversation. That was a topic that Frawley was kind of talking about. I would, I guess, like a long way of saying, like, what, what are your like, what's your criteria? When you look at a strongman show and you decide if you're going to so- sign up or not, yep. What's your criteria? Yep. But um, you know the other thing we're talking about, and it's crazy because uh, I've I've been hearing it a lot lately. Like the last like six months to a year, is someone, whether it's a cl- I'm not throwing anyone on the bus, whether it's a client, a gym member, someone I just you know we all have our strongman friends on Instagram and stuff like that, but saying like. I don't want to sign up for this show because I might not win. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a topic. Dante said something in the last thing that actually reminded me that segmented to this very well. Oh, he's Dante said it perfectly. Like, this is my attitude. And I'm again, trying to get discourse from people that listen, but he said, I'm going to do the Arnold because it's a big show and I'm going to get better doing it. Yeah. Perhaps that. Dude, I wish I would have dove into the, that mindset earlier. Literally, like yeah. my second year in Strongman, I wish I would have just said, screw it, and just signed up for the big – I qualified for nationals every year I did it, and I didn't do it till my third or fourth year in competing. I wish I would have went to the first nationals I did, qualified for, the second national I did, and just it's, done it. Just think about, like – think about going to a nationals and, like, the difference of a local show to a national show, like the difference levels – and like when you go to the national level, you get pulled up, right? Like you're pulling yourself up to that level. Yeah. And like now that becomes a normal thing for you because you're competing at that level. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So the next time you do a local show, you're kind of probably going to have a little bit better time handling the weights, the loads, you know, the events. And then you're just, it snowballs. Like, you, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, going, I think about, I think about, you know, Dante and I, like, the first national we went to, got yeah. our asses kicked. Yeah, I got freaking yeah. buried. <laughs> I won the next year. I won yeah. that same nationals in the same federation the next year. Right. Like, and, and, like, just the little things. Like, Dante, I'm sure you have examples of things you learned at 2021 nationals. But, like, mine, meeting Andrew Hanus, talking to Andrew Hanus, like, he kicked my teeth in on a sandbag toss. I did. I just tossed sandbags next to Andrew Hanus, my first nationals. <laughs> the lane directly next to him with like my entire family watching and he's done with all five before I finish my second, yeah. you know, but then like just being able to talk to him, meet him, pick stuff up from him. You, you see the better guys in your class. How do they carry themselves in warm up? And what do yep. they do at the rules meeting? How are they like that guy's way bigger than me. I mean, look at Dante. Dante was a two sixty five, yeah. but he looked, I, but yeah. he, well, it, yeah, it was a subclass that, you know, you were a super heavyweight. Yeah, and but right. but Dante walking around looked like the good 231s. Mm-hmm. So that was when the light bulb went off in Dante's head. Hey, maybe I need to learn better nutrition. 
how to properly water cut and take a whole year. And then next year, go to 231s. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the next year, he's, like, top 15 in nationals, you know, at 231. Right. right. So, um, you just still learn. learn. Stuff. Like, I, like, I'm still You learn stuff. You should you learn, learn every stuff. No matter the time. size of the show, you should learn stuff at every show. But I do yep. think my whole point is, and I've used this quote a million times, probably to you two directly, but I'd rather be the small fish in a big pond than be the, the big fish in a small pond. Yep. And I think if you limit yourself and dude, if you just want to have fun and go to just local shows, that's great. But like, I think getting out of that mindset, getting out of that like comfortability of, and go to a huge show or a bigger show from whatever level you're at, you will learn so much more and it's going to make sure. you 10 times better of an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. No I doubt. Just, no, I mean, I, well, I, like, like when you're doing that with the event disciplines and the event disciplines are weights that are 70% of your max on the event. It's like, okay, are you really pushing yourself to actually get better? Or is it wow. just like going through the motions of the events to try to, you know, work through? And is your goal to win a local show or is your goal to try to win national, right? Yeah. Like there's a or is your goal to, goal to be the best strong man you can be because right. I guarantee like, if you pick a show with some weights that scare you, yeah. you're going to get a hell of a lot stronger you're gonna get than like, yep. like I just – me personally, I think a lot of people like this mentally. Like if I have an event at a show coming up and I know I can do 20 reps on it, What's that I don't really, for? I don't really care. No. Nope. Like what's the point of me? Like I shouldn't, I don't even need to train that event. I'm going to do right. 20 freaking reps. Yeah. Like, yeah. Cause some local shows have weight makers that are super light. Yeah. And like, it, that's great. Mm -hmm. But it's good for the right audience, right? Like, but if right. you're the guy who's like, okay, I'm going to do this local show because I'm going to go win. But if I don't, if I see somebody else on there and, oh, that guy might beat me. Oh, maybe I won't go then. Like, mm -hmm. that's yeah. like, it's a competition. The competing is the whole point. Also, you could go be like, man, that guy might beat me. But then you could go, you compete, you finish five events and you beat that guy. Yeah. Right. Like, and then you go, wow. I thought that I wasn't, there's no way I could have beat that guy. Yeah. And then the or over. even, or even like you beat him in one event. Like, yeah. oh, this guy got top, top five at nationals. You beat him in an event. That's cool. It's good. Right. It like, might be one of their worst events, obviously, but like you still beat him. You know, yeah. and if you realize that everybody has their strengths, everybody has their weaknesses, everybody has their in between. It's all about bringing the full package up. Right. Mm -hmm. And sure. signing up for the local show, Big Fish in a Small Pond, probably not going to pull up your whole package. Right. Not at all. Pushing your pushing pushing the top end of your limits, probably gonna bring up your full package. Yeah. Right. And there's so, there's levels to it depending on where you're at. Like you yeah. may just now have competed in your first open show. It's like, yep. well then pick another local open show that has slightly heavier weights. Yeah. And then find like find a regional. Yeah. Find a you know? exactly find a regional. Go to the regional. There's gonna be good people there. Yep. There's gonna be really good people there. Yep. And be like, hey man, I want to just go and and then next year, hey, I'm gonna do nationals now, and it, it's like it's just a it's a real, it's just a cycle of just continuously yeah. going to a bigger show. And then like yeah. for me this year at OSG, I had no expectations of how I was gonna do. I how could you? You could have told me been. I got top ten. You could have told me I got thirteenth, which I did. You could have told me I got twenty fifth. I right. would have been happy either way. Right. But I just like even just in like the what OSG was two months ago almost now it's yeah. it's like i feel like i'm a 10 times better athlete just from going to my first osg yep when you will yeah you and will. like i think dante going and seeing this year and getting to be backstage i think that even shows him things like just being there volunteering like stuff like that like can help too so it's like you know, it, i don't it, know it's i like, just it's like what they say you are who you surround yourself with so 100 percent. Right. that's that's a right. great that's, that's a great too. point no it's if just yeah. yeah, go ahead, Frawley. Like, if you look around to Dante's point, you look around the room, everybody's doing, I don't know, everybody can do at a, a middleweight. Middleweight pressers in the uh, OSG world probably hitting 320 log, right? Lots of them are. Right? Yeah, you look more, around the room. What do you think? Even 400s, dude. Well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying, like, Crazy. even middle of the road guys are hitting, oh, hitting yeah. over 300 pounds. And you look around, and you're like, man, all these guys can do that. And now, it makes it human, right? It makes it human to see somebody go in and do these weights that you're co directly competing against. You're exposed to it. It's like, you know, the goldfish grows to the size of the tank, right? No, that's false. You put actually. yourself in a bigger tank, 
put yourself in a bigger tank. Don't get Dante rough. started with it. So, yeah. I mean, I agree, man. It's just it, – it. to your point too, Josh, it also depends what your goals are. If your goals yeah. are just to go and have fun and strong, man, then don't don't stress yourself out with whatever, right? But, like, yeah. if you want to go to the next level, to this level, level, then just level up, staying and competing at shows that aren't challenging isn't really benefiting you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So. No, I think those are amazing topics this week. I think there's like a ton to, that's probably our best episode we've done in a long time. Just like natural, those things kind of just naturally came up. Mm-hmm. I'd be very curious. I would love if people would like kind of comment, even D, if you don't want to comment, I get it. DM us. Like, yeah, we, we have a Q and A thing on Spotify too. So, interact oh with yeah, that. good, yeah, good, cool. uh, good, idea. good point. We actually had a cup. we had some like reviews pop up in there. If people review our pod, Dante, they come up. Yeah, I see the, I saw a couple the, come up. Yeah. But yeah, you can actually go into our Spotify and we see it on our back end. Like, so you can comment even on our Spotify. Like, yeah, I do. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I, I like this. But definitely let us know. Like, when you are going to sign up for a strongman competition and you see the events, what are your criteria? What pushes you away? What makes you sign up? I want to know that. Also, mm-hmm. you know, be that small fish in a big spawn. Don't forget to be that. I think, you know, um, not to toot our own horn, but I think since 580 opened three years ago, I think that's what a lot of people that compete in strongman have seen this consistent, almost linear strength gain. It's because you're always seeing people do new stuff. We had a 200, they hit a 225 circus. I see that. And I'm like, dude, I need to kick that guy's ass. Like I, I see, you know, like we have Kacharski, Gus and Frawley who are all in the same class and they get to train together around each other. And like, you know, Frawley sees Gus pull 800 or, you know, Frawley, Frawley and Kacharski both hitting like a three, you know, high, high threes log. Like, you know, just, you becomes know, normal, like, right? just seeing people like just being at a gym that we're lucky. Cause we're at a gym where there's a lot of strong people who are all pushing each other to be stronger. So but if only I had a middleweight to train with. Yeah, I finally found an eighty kg. I mean, you're basically a super heavyweight. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I'd rather train with the big boys, anyways. We'll get better. Ask yeah, your, ask your no. nutrition coach about that, Dante. Yeah. When his eyeballs almost popped out of his head on the that podcast, was so you funny. told him what you weigh. I'm doing great right now. <laughs> Just weight literally, yeah. weight literally can't stay on me right now. I'm, yeah, no. Yeah. It, I, I really appreciate everyone's support of the pod. Like, it's crazy. We're still going three years later. Um, and it's, it, it, it's fun. There's always stuff to talk about. And, you know, tw- I think 2024 is going to be an awesome year for the pod. We already had on Ross. Um, that nutrition episode I thought was really good. I'd like I'd actually like to get him on again because I always, I always get done with the pod. And I'm like, man, I should ask that guy this. I think nutrition is like a super underrepresented topic. Yeah. And I, I, it's crazy. I don't think we, I don't think we exclaimed it hard enough in the episode, but people are very, very clueless and uneducated with water cuts. Like it, it's scary. Cause it's not a thing. Like it's not a thing you just do. I mean, yeah. Okay. You do like a two or three pound water cut. Like that's not really a water cut, but like you have athletes just like, they're like, Oh, this guy at my gym did a, did a 18 pound water cut i'm gonna do it Mm -hmm. like people just it's too normalized now where people don't understand and then they go to their do their first water cut and you see it how often you see it oh i tried i did everything i could i couldn't make it and it's like but then you ask them how they did it how they went about their water cut and you're like oh that's probably not how i'm not a nutritionist but that's not how i would recommend it so i think it'd be cool maybe once a quarter to get like ross on and just talk about nutrition because it's cool and underrepresented but yeah we had amelia on last week i thought it went really cool and i'd love if you guys have guest recommendations we'd always like to talk to more cool people and strongman so i think next week tom hibbert will be on cool cool so if anyone has coaching questions for tom he's crazy the crazy coach so yeah let's know what coach is we appreciate it i don't know if you guys have anything else to say this episode make sure Wrap make sure up. you're following Follow us on Instagram. Follow Dante's new production company. I'm excited to see Dante stream next week. I, That's- I really don't yeah. know how much I'm going to post on that. Mainly it's just like a platform to like. Yeah. Well, it, but, yeah, we'll see but, what happens. 
if you run, you know, the cool thing about Dante, we've talked about it for years that he can offer is, you know, maybe he's not charging you the highest. He can offer it like a really good serviceable lives live stream for, yeah, the big shows like PSL this weekend, but like a local show. And I don't want to speak too much for you, Dante, but like a pretty affordable, means- relatively affordable option for a really good live stream, especially for a local level show. You know, yeah, so like, like if you're not, a promoter, I, like I enjoy doing this stuff too. So it's like, especially if I know people doing the show, I'd probably go and be there anyways. I don't yeah. mind just like doing like a little well, basic like, little stream or something. You know, local promoters are already pinching pennies just to like, you know, for sure it's awards, a venue, stuff like that. And like so many people have friends and family that want to watch, but they can't go to this show or that show. And like Dante, you know, just having that live stream on YouTube is awesome. Like, you hear it every, we hear it every time. Yeah, so, yeah, make sure you buy Grip Mountain Chalk Horsepower. You guys Bro, go to, uh, if you guys go to Shopify. We have our shirts on there and hoodies on there and stuff too. So check that out, five eighty barbell dot com, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week for episode one sixty two. Go Steelers! Yeah.